It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I just finished loading my bar for Christmas here on the channel. Uh, we got a beer and Messina on the blade. We put a Krups, the subcompact, a Urtorp Lager uh, from Finland in there. And we just put in a, a Lager from Lefe. La Lager, which was incredible. I had a little taste of that as I loaded the keg. So I'm all I'm in a bit of a Christmassy mood today, and I thought to myself after loading all of these kegs up, I'm going to review one more beer before Christmas, Christmas Eve here on the channel. Um, this is High Hops Tropical IPA, 5.4% ABV by Purple Moose Brewery, based in Mid Wales. Uh, this is a 440 milliliter can. This is the first beer that Purple Moose have put in a can. And it looks pretty cool, to be honest. I quite like that kind of tropical kind of look to the can. Lots of palm trees and stuff's going on. So um, I'm not going to read the back of the can because it'll try and influence what I want to think and, and, and smell and taste of the beer. So I'm going to go into this blind like I always do. A little bit of smoke on the can opening. Beer in the glass. The beer a bit of a wash round. Look at that. You wouldn't complain about that if it was served to you in Belgium. Or Germany. Or the Czech Republic for that matter. That's a that's a perfect pour there. And um, basically what we what we have here is the head of the beer is protecting the beer itself. It looks very, rather nice, doesn't it? Slow moving carbonation, uh, two to three finger white head, hazy looking, hazy looking straw on its way to amber coloured IPA. Let's get the nose on this one then. Uh, one more thing, there's no lumps and chunks in here. There's a little bit of kind of micro sediment going on, but it's not too bad. Aroma. Oh, that smells really good. That smells really, really good. Mm. Passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange peel, fleshy blood orange. It's one of those beers that you, you could stand and sniff for three, four minutes easily without without even taking a taste. It smells incredible. Let's dive into this one. Cheers, everybody. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's that's really, really, really good beer. Oh, I got to put that down. Yeah, that agrees too. Stone the Crows. Stone the Crows. What an incredible beer. Lovely smashing bitterness on the end of this beer. It really is. But it's full of grapefruit, passion fruit, mango. I used to go to my grandfather's house and I used to sleep there on a Friday night while my parents used to go and dance the night away as, as a young child. And my grandfather would always cut a grapefruit in half for me and my sister. He used to sprinkle sugar on one side of the, on both sides of the grapefruit and just hand them to me and my sister. And me and my sister used to devour these kind of half grapefruits with sugar on the top and it was just like a, a wonderful wonderful experience it tasted great but this tastes exactly the same as that is a little bit of sweetness from that kind of cut grapefruit and then you get the a mixture of a, the, the bitterness and the sharpness from the grapefruits and pardon me and then the flavor of the grapefruit absolutely wonderful fleshy blood orange flavors coming through passion fruit mango beautiful beautiful beer 
Beautiful, beautiful beer. Now, now previously, my favourite beer from um, Purple Moose was their... They used to make an elderflower, they probably still do, a, a really good elderflower, like pale ale type beer, which was incredible, an incredibly drinkable beer that you could drink pint after pint after pint of. I can imagine being in a Purple Moose tap room, probably at, the, at their brewery, having a couple of their elderflower beers and then working my way up to this high hops and saying, yeah, let's have a couple of these as well. It is delicious, delicious beer. Oh, from the balance, from the mouthfeel, from the spicy pepperiness on the back end to that beautiful bitterness. The mouthfeel is incredible. You get a little tingle of carbonation pushing the beer on the inside of the mouth, releasing more of that flavour. But it's got a slightly kind of thick-ish body. It's very drinkable and refreshing. I'm not taking anything away from the kind of that part of the mouthfeel, but also it's got this kind of slight kind of stickiness where the beer sticks to the inside of the palate. As it does so, all of those kind of hops that, that, that's in the beer sit on your palate longer too. And it's like a taste explosion, it is. I've got my suspicions as to why Purple Moose brewed this beer. They're smack in the middle of Wales, mid Wales. To the north of them, they've got Polly's Bruco, absolutely smashing it. Up until recently, they have dropped off quite a lot recently, mind you. To the south of Purple Moose, you had Tiny Rebel, which in their early days as a brewery, were absolutely pumping out tremendous beer. So they were like stuck in the middle. They, they, had, they had Polly's Brugo to the north, Tiny Rebel to the south, producing great beer. I'm not taking anything away from Purple Moose. The Elderflower beer, for me, is a terrific beer and it's won multiple, multiple awards. But I just wonder if being stuck in the middle of two great breweries in a relatively small country... Did these two breweries have an influence on this beer? If they have, absolutely fine. Purple Moose are in their, in their absolute right to produce absolutely top-notch top -notch craft beer, which this is in abundance. This really is. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say that if you offered me a Tiny Rebel, if you offered me a Polly's Bruco beer, or if you offered me this, I think I would take this. I think I would take this. The reason being, it's 5.4% ABV, is to the, probably to the north, at my limit really, to session beer. I like, I'm a lover of session in beer. I'm a lover of just standing at my bar here or in a pub and just whittling the hours away, drinking pint after pint. It's just kind of... I suppose it's my kind of tail end reputation really of um, or the history of my family really where my dad and my grandfathers you know they would prop up the bar for hours and hours and hours so it's only natural that I'm going to do the same thing so it's sessionable for me but honestly that I could drink I could drink pints of this pints and pints of this If this is the future of Polly's Bruco, then they have a wonderful, wonderful future. Wonderful future. But I'm going to say one thing. One thing. If they get the praise and the sales that they deserve for this beer, my message to Purple Moose is clear. Please stick with that quality. Stick with this quality of beer. If you, if you expand massively because this is such a wonderfully selling beer, then please don't do what Brewdog do and Tiny Rebel do and most other breweries do when they expand. They reduce the quality of the beer. This in 2021, I'm predicting this is going to be a massive seller for Purple Moose. This at the back end of 2021 
is an incredible, incredible IPA. In fact, one of the best I've had all year, 2021. We're, we're, we're about Christmas Eve, 24th. We're about, we're about seven days, seven, eight days away from the new year, wrapping up 2021. And it's fitting, really, that probably my last beer review of the year, I've just tasted my most amazing favourite IPA of the year. And of course, being a Welshman, it's not because they're Welsh. It's because the beer is terrific. I'm going to rate it. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. From the lacing on the glass, to the fantastic head, to the look to the beer, to the smell to the beer, to the taste of the beer. It is just one of those beers in life that just grabs you by the ghoulies and doesn't let go. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Go get yourself a can of high hops. It is wonderful. Put your comments in the comments box. Please subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom! Cheers!